Mucho, everybody. Welcome to the third ever episode of Fun on Weekdays podcast. I am your host, Jenna Palick. If you made it through the first two episodes, I commend you for coming back for a third. I have a very fun, exciting episode planned for you guys. And since it's the third episode, I figured it was only right to talk about a three word phrase. It's something that it makes me uncomfortable. Um, It makes me anxious. It's not something that I've experienced in the past couple of years. And honestly, I I don't really know how you guys are going to perceive it. But I know a lot of you follow me on my personal social media. You know that I've had a lot of changes lately and a lot of things are going on in my life. So, oh my goodness, my heart is racing. Uh, Those three words are paid time off. Ah, did I get you? Did I get you? You probably thought I was going to talk about my relationship status. Nope, you're wrong. I'm just as confused about that as you guys are, and I'm sure that'll eventually become another episode, but you'll just have to wait until I figure that out for myself. So today's episode is about paid time off because entering my first real job after college, going on vacation is absolutely nothing like going on vacation in high school or in college. Like you have real responsibilities when you're going on paid time off on vacation for your job it is so much different because you have people who are continuously working people who are continuously emailing you messaging you while you're out having a good time and you're feeling guilty because you're like oh my god what am i missing right now i'm gonna have so much to catch up on and so today i just kind of want to talk about the reality of why we need to take that time for ourselves so i started my job last july first full-time job out of college, I was working from home. So obviously everything is online. It's so hard to draw the line between my personal life and my career. And like, when do you log off of your computer? Because a nine to five, typically you would go into the office and when you leave the office, you're disassociated, you know? You are offline for the day and you're good to go. You can do whatever you want after. But working from home, I mean, you're constantly on your computer. You're constantly working with people who are in different time zones. And it's really hard to coordinate uh, time for you to just completely get off of your computer, get off of your phone, off of your emails. So this kind of goes back to the, the first time that I really struggled with the idea of it. Um, my job, personally, I have paid sick days, I have uh, floating holidays, and then I have paid time off. And so you can really use any of those three different things in order to take vacation time. So this was really like the first time that I took real PTO. Um, I went to Cabo about, what was it, two weeks ago now? And so this is my first time taking a real vacation. I've been to New York City and LA and Chicago in the past few months from the beginning of the year. But it was only for like a weekend trip and I would bring my computer, I would work while I was there. And a lot of you guys are like, how are you taking so much time off of work? Like, how are you traveling so much? And the reality of it was I wasn't taking time off of work. I was bringing my computer with me wherever I went and I was working during the day. And then I would put my computer away at five or whenever it was. And I would go and film TikToks. And, you know, that's the part that you guys would see. But the first time that I really struggled with... um, with taking time off of work was back in, I believe it was March, um, my grandma passed away and she, my family is all in Ohio. I'm in Texas um, and it was obviously unexpected. And I I mean, I guess I shouldn't say obviously, but it was unexpected. And I knew that I had to go home and see my family, but it was also a very busy time at work. And so I just felt so insanely guilty Like, how do I go to my manager and just say, hey, do you mind if I take a week off of work because I have multiple days that I need to travel and then I'm going to have, you know, the calling hours, the funeral service, and then just taking time with my family because especially living in a different state, um, I really, really needed just multiple days to spend time with them because I don't get to see my family a lot. So it was a really important time for me to be able to unplug completely, not have to worry about work. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, I'm going through something that I need to take time away from work, but why do I feel guilty that I'm taking too much time to myself? And then it got me thinking, and this kind of goes back to the Fun on Weekdays mantra of, we are going to work our entire lives. I mean, maybe if you're in a different situation, you won't be working, you'll be working for yourself. 
and even still in that, it's still working, but we're gonna be working our entire lives and you have to prioritize yourself, your own mental health, because if you don't take the time off when you need it, you're not gonna be efficient when you're working. So it's, it's more beneficial for you to take those few days and then to maybe have some catch up work for you to kind of ground yourself and you know realign, refresh, and then come back to work with, with a better mindset. So a couple weeks ago, this was the first time that I took real PTO. I went to Cabo with some girlfriends. There were five of us. And that's another thing too. Uh, when you get older, you don't realize it's not like you can just call up your friends and you're all on the same schedule and you can all take off work. So it was hard for us to coordinate. Um, and being in college, I never even considered that that was gonna be something that I would deal with as like an actual adult. But everybody has different timelines and it's really hard to see your friends, especially when they have their own schedules, maybe they're in a different state, they have their own traveling things, they have their own restrictions. So you really, when you, when you do have those opportunities to take time off and to spend it maybe with a loved one or your friends or your family, enjoy it because those moments are limited. I mean, I have 15 PTO days a year, I have four floating holidays and I have seven sick days. So that's what? Seven plus four, 11, 15 plus, uh, 11 plus 15, 26. I have 26 days off of an entire year. So when I have that day off, unplug. Like literally shut down your computer, do not check your phone, do not check your email. And your company will want that too. Because if you're taking PTO, it's expected that you are not working. Um, so with that being said, I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of advice with that. Um, not that I have a whole lot of experience with PTO, but going into the rest of the episode, I wanted to do a recap of my trip to Cabo because honestly, this was so fun. It was kind of a last minute trip. Um, like I said, there were five of us girls. We all met when we were living in Austin. Um, Lily, my roommate came. And so now I'm going to bring on my roommate, Lily. And she has been in her room while I've been recording this first part. So she's probably a couple glasses deeper in wine than I am. Um, Now reconsidering, it probably would have made more sense for us to be drinking margaritas, considering we were just in Cabo. Um, But yeah, let me bring in Lily and we'll get the show on the road. Sit back, enjoy a drink, enjoy your hot girl walk, you know, whatever you're doing. You're on your lunch break, you're sitting at work and you just need a good laugh. I am here to give it to you. All right, hey Lily. Hey guys, I'm a couple of giggle juice glasses deep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Lily is here. How many though, actually? Before before we get into it, this is only two. I'm the lightweight. Oh, okay, yeah, but you do have a much bigger glass than me. If you're watching the video, you can see that I'm drinking out of a champagne flute, and Lily's drinking out of a wine glass. Wait, <laughs> get that right in the in the speaker ASMR. Oh, that was good. <laughs> we got harmonized too on the ooh. <laughs> Yeah. Ooh. Okay, so Lily is here today to talk about our trip to Cabo because honestly, I feel like we both kind of remember bits and pieces of it. Like when I was drunk, she was not, and when she was drunk, I was not. Like, I yeah. think that we were all kind of going in waves. So we're just going to take you through the entire vacation and make you feel like you were there with us on our girls' trip. You good with that? I'm good with that. Okay, take it away then. First day, we started on Saturday. Okay. Well, I'm trying to think back. So, the first thing was kind of blurry. We did, like, this travel day, and it was super easy getting there. It was a direct flight from Austin. And I was like, we're going to have some bad karma because this flight was... I never have good travel days. And this flight was so easy. Like, we had rows to ourselves. (laughs) I actually had the entire row to ourselves. We got to just sit by whoever we wanted to, and then... I had so much elbow space that I could like put my arms out. And when you're on a plane and you're sleeping, how do you sleep? Um, so I've kind of figured it out. So I put the tray table down. Yeah. And then I put my head like this, and that is the comfiest way I've ever found to sleep. Okay, same. I do that. I put the tray down in front of me, but then I make sure to bring a big book bag, and then I bring like a second sweatshirt. So I put the book bag on top of the tray, and then I put the sweatshirt on top of the book bag. So it's kind of like a pillow, like a mound. Mm-hmm. You just Put your head on it. Yeah, it's kind of like back in the school days when you would fall asleep, like, on your desk. Yeah, why did I get such... Bu- so comfy. I have better sleep at my desk than I do in my bed here sometimes, I think. Yeah. 
So we had a great flight. I mean, we went straight there. We got into customs. Everything was going way too smooth. We're like, this is literally going to backfire at some point. Yes. And it doesn't feel right. It's like, <laughs> like, it's like the narrator was like, but wait. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to the resort. And, okay, mind you, so the resort that we went to, we were going to Cabo for our friend Kennedy's birthday. Just turned 20, 23 or 24. Oh, my God, Kennedy. <laughs> I'm such a bad friend for not even knowing, but I'm pretty sure Kennedy's younger. No, she was the baby, so she was just turning 23. Okay, that makes me feel better. So her family has a timeshare in Cabo. Apparently, she didn't know about this timeshare for years. <laughs> just found out about it this year, and she's Which like, I don't well, understand. I don't understand either. And every year for her birthday, her parents will, like, t- you know, send her on a little trip. And um, so this year, went out with a bang for Cabo because last year it was COVID. So me and Lily get invited and we're like, well, what are we going to do? Yeah. Say no? I'm like, sure, I'll uh, work a couple extra shifts. And the <laughs> plane ride down there was not that – because Texas is pretty close. It's a direct flight, so it wasn't that expensive. Yeah, I mean, our flight was only like two and a half hours. But the entire trip itself, we only paid for the flights, and then we paid for, like, the all-inclusive at the resort – because the, the hotel itself was paid for, mm-hmm. for the timeshare. So we get there, and it's what, like, we got an early flight on Saturday for the main purpose of being able to check in early, not realizing that we did not have early check-in. Yes. So we, we weren't able to check into our place until, what, like, 4 Yeah, four-ish? so we just went to this restaurant, and we got all-inclusive, and it felt <laughs> too good to be true. They give you a menu. Oh, my gosh. Wait, and we're, like, starving. <laughs> And so they give you this menu, and you can literally order whatever, like, whatever you want. Anything that you want. It's like, oh, my God. It was No almost, catch. No catch to it. Anything you want. It almost felt illegal. Like, I should not have this much access to unlimited food and drinks. Yeah. The drinks especially. Cheers to Cheers. that. Cheers to that. So we're sitting at our first... <laughs> We're sitting at our first meal. We get the menu in front of us for the first time, and immediately my eyes are drawn to the shrimp basket. You guys, I don't even like shrimp, but for whatever reason, I was like, ooh, I'm in, I'm in Cabo. I am definitely going to convert to the seafood menu. Yeah. So we got this, sh- this giant bowl of shrimp, and I feel like it's just a reoccurring theme for the week, and we'll kind of get into that a little bit later. Mm-hmm. But this is our first meal here. We ended up spending a good amount of time at that restaurant and then and then did we check in I think we we checked in after that checked in just like kind of had a chill day I mean it just got the drinks flowing mm-hmm. but that night was what was truly special yeah talk about, rock talk about it talk about it well we drank at the hotel that night yeah so actually <laughs> <laughs> we can't tell the story without saying that we tried to go downtown Cabo I am so sorry, Mom and Dad. I know you're listening. Um, we tried to go to downtown that first night. Yeah, I also promised my mom and dad I would not leave. Yeah. We actually, second thought, we didn't go. We thought about it, guys, but we didn't go. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so we get this giant van to take us, and it was pretty expensive to get there. And then what even happened that first night? Why did we not end up going out? Oh, nothing was open. Yeah, they nothing all closed was... at 10 p.m. So we got to downtown Cabo, and they're like, Get Sorry. Out. Yeah, they're, we got to take you right back around. And we were jamming. We had some random girls in the car <laughs> in the van with us, and we were just like, going crazy we're like gonna get our hot girl shit on at the club <laughs> <laughs> and these girls too they're asking us in the lobby they're like oh my god are, are the clubs open and we're like yeah we're going you guys want to get in our yeah. van and we promised them that we were going to the club yeah we swore. and mind you we all look so good like i wore that black mini dress with the black heels that night mm-hmm. everybody dressed to the nines just to sit in the car. To the nines. <laughs> then, then they tried to take us to that, that uh, Cabo Jack's place. Yes. And we're in this car, and we're looking out the window. We're like, where the fuck are we? What is this? Like, I'm not getting out of the car. It was so dark out there. Nothing was open. Mm-hmm. And so we eventually just realized, okay, let's just go back to the resort. And we ended up going to the tequila bar that was on the resort. And tequila bar has every kind of tequila you want, just like the name says. Like, you can get Don Julio, and this is included in all-inclusive. Yeah. I just can't get over it. Yeah, it was a premium, premium advantage of that. Yeah. I'm like, Don Julio in a bottom shelf tequila. Yeah. It, it Whatever was, you want. It was dangerous. So, next thing we know, something 
some type of spirit summons all of us to this giant boulder rock on the beach. <laughs> we all, like, literally, I don't, I don't remember any conversation of us being like, let's go to the beach and go sit on a rock. No. It just happened. We just all ended up there. And next thing you know, we wake up in the morning and we're all looking at our social media and we're like, uh, what? <laughs> what happened? I think we, it was like this huge little mermaid rock. We were the only ones on the beach and we all sat on that rock <laughs> and we were all a bunch of chatty Cathy's, but we didn't talk to each other for like a good hour. I don't know how long we were. We were there. No. We were like in a trance. We weren't even sitting next to each other though. Like imagine this giant rock and we're all sitting on like different like high points yeah, of the rock. Layers. And we're all just like completely mute. Just staring at the ocean like coming up. Yeah I think every once in a while someone would go wow or ooh. <laughs> like, I think we were just really excited to be there. So I wake up in the morning and we are all waking up a little late. Mm-hmm. What like 11.30 so half of the day has already passed us. And I check my Snapchat, and oh my god, I'm not even one to use Snapchat. So the fact that I Snapchatted that night in itself is a little bit alarming. That to me told me all I needed to know. What did it say? Should I pull it up? Yeah. I just, I just saved it to my phone. You're talking about the Snapchat or the Instagram? Because the Instagram was worse. Oh no, what was the Instagram? Okay, so I wake <laughs> up a little bit before Jenna, and I'm checking socials, and I look at her Instagram story. It is this, I swear, like a 10, 10 oh. slideshow on her Instagram story of just... She it was, was 10 frames. 10 frames, and she's trying to record the ocean. I mean, we all thought it was beautiful, but you couldn't capture this on camera. She was just recording, like, the moon reflecting on the ocean, but it literally looked like she just, like, was putting her phone camera on a car headlight. And she put it to this... I love Coldplay, but it put it to this weird old Coldplay (laughs) song. I was clearly clearly in my feels. And that, to me, I mean, I was posting that at, like, maybe 3.30, 4 (laughs) a.m. If I would have saw, saw, if I would have, what's the past tense? If I would have saw. See? If if I would have seen. Oh, my God. No more (laughs) giggle juice. (laughs) If I would have seen that from somebody else, I would have just been so alarmed. Okay, here it is. This is the picture. And it's me in a t-shirt. I have, like, heavy eye makeup on. And Julianne in this, like, red tight dress. Her sticky bra is showing. And, oh, shoot, that's not the picture. Damn it, where's the picture? But that one's funny. What's that one's fun, do? too. The caption to this picture was, what's he going to do? Send the cops on me for having a fun girl weekend? <laughs> oh, Julianne's probably going to make me want to cut that out. But Julianne has a boyfriend and, like... We weren't doing anything wrong, but she said that at the beginning of the week, like, what's my boyfriend going to do? Like, arrest me for having fun? Yeah, we're like, that kind of set the mood of the trip. Like. Yeah, it really did, honestly. That was, like, the motto for the whole for the whole trip. Monday, it's a new day. We're ready to start all over. Mm-hmm. And during the day, so let me just preface this by saying we woke up late and every single day we would all get ready and they'd put on a full face of makeup like we are photo shoot ready for the thirst trap pictures Mm -hmm. completely and the way that we were getting ready for that was by jamming out to call me maybe and (laughs) basically all songs all an entire playlist from like 2014 and a half who had the ox Oh my god, Madison, Madison, love you, but your ox game, so bad. She would, she had this like 2000s playlist on, I like a good early 2000s, but it was like, Call Me Maybe, Cobra Starships. No, like. but the, no, but the thing was, it wasn't early enough 2000s. It's like that yeah. really weird in-between phase, like it wasn't 6th grade, it was maybe in between 8th and ninth. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, we were getting ready every single day to that playlist. Monday, we spend the day on the beach, taking pictures, whatever, and then we actually ended up going out that night. And this is the night that we actually made it out to downtown Cabo. So first place we go is Squid Row. First of all, the way that that is even the name of a place just, I don't know. I was in theater in high school, and I was in the show Little Shop of Horrors, and it was, it was set on, what's it called, Skid Row? And so every single time they would say Squid Row, I just didn't believe them until I until we showed up there and then I saw it on a sign. 
But when Jen and I uh, walked into Squid Row, we <laughs> quickly turned into into Skid Mark Row. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, so you guys, like I said, the shrimp basket we got on the first day, we were loving the shrimp. Oh, like, we were not just loving, we were we had to have it every meal, breakfast, lunch, dinner, we ordered the <laughs> shrimp basket. We were loving it until we absolutely hated it. It backfired so quickly. Also, too, before we even got into Skid Row, <laughs> Squid Row. Before we even got into Squid Row, we went to I think three different ATMs. Like we could not get cash, no. and it it was twenty dollars a person to get into this janky little place. The infrastructure I don't even know how it was how it was legal. No, like Skid Row itself, I felt like four I was, and a half rows. Yeah, I felt like I was gonna fall. So me and Lily, we get in there and we get our two free drinks that come with our entrance of twenty dollars. Yes, you have to pay twenty bucks to get in. But, but you do get two free drinks. Yeah. No, so it's pretty worth it. So basically, we just paid $10 per drink. But anyways, I mean, if you, you look at it from different angles, you know, <laughs> glass half empty, glass <laughs> glass half full. So we are on, this, this place is like four levels, and our friends just keep going around. They are so excited to be back because they've all been in Cabo in college, and we, mm-hmm. this is our first time experiencing it. So we're just like in a little bit of a maze. It kind of felt like a playground in there. Yeah. And me and Lily are like, mm, I really don't feel good. Like, our stomachs are rumbling. We are, I'm, like, sweating. I'm like, I don't know if I can make up these stairs. There are literal drops of sweat <laughs> forming a puddle below our feet. And these boys are trying to talk to us. And I'm, like, so not okay at all. I literally am just... I cannot think about anything other than the fact, like, did I just get mm. food poisoning or what? <laughs> so before we even get a chance to do that, let's talk about the boy that comes up to us. So everybody that was in Squid Row, I have to keep correct. <laughs> <laughs> everybody that was in Squid, squ- yeah, Squid, Squid Row, Row was younger because everybody, you know, you're 18, you can legally drink there. Mm-hmm. And we think we're going to go out and see all these cute boys and get our <laughs> flirt on. Turns out they're all, like, 17, graduating high school, and they have fake 18-year-old IDs just so they can drink in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So we're standing there, me and Lily. We just got our drinks. I'm drinking a vodka Sprite or a vodka soda, one of the two. I'm double fisting two little (laughs) solo cups of tequila soda with lime, and it's just, it's terrible. I mean, we're still sweating. We're, like, we're not feeling good. Sweating bullets, just trying to literally get through the night. And all of a sudden, this short little fella comes up to us. Short little fella. I, was, I mean, I'm 5'3", and I was looking directly into his eyeballs. Like, pupil mm-hmm. to pupil. And that, to me, that tells me all I need to know. And I, I was mean, feeling like Jenna's bodyguard. I was like, <laughs> oh my God. I was like, my friend. Lily, how tall are you? 5'10". Okay, yeah. Lily, well, you get another inch on there, and I'll reconsider things. <laughs> <laughs> so, this guy comes up to us, and... First thing he says is, oh my god, do you remember what he says? He says something weird. I feel like he was like, how old are you? Oh, that was it. That was it. Sketchy. Yeah, that was it. And I'm like, I think I originally made a joke that I was like 15 or something. Mm -hmm. Um, Being like, "Ah, I'm a minor. Like, don't talk to me. But then he actually ended up being the minor. So I told him that I was 23, and he told me that he was 20. And I'm like, you are not 20. There's literally no no way. The kids around you don't even have a, like, a single hair of facial hair. Mm -hmm. Not even a single facial pube. You know what I mean? Like, when they first started growing, like, the facial hair, and it just looks like pubes on their face. Yeah, like single pubes, yeah. None of that. None of that in sight. So that, to me, tells me you are not even in college yet. Mm -hmm. And he tells me he's 20, and then I finally get it out of him that he is about to be 19 and then I'm like well okay when is about to be 19 we're like actually like how old yeah and then it turns out he literally just turned 18 (laughs) like just turned 18 and so he asks me if he can buy me a drink and I say yeah of course and Lily's like hell yeah you can buy us drinks (laughs) yeah and then yeah you can buy us drinks yeah and I said only if you can buy her one too And then he says, well, what are you drinking? And I say, whatever I'm drinking. And he says, can I have a sip of it? And I'm like, no, what? (laughs) And he's like, let me just waterfall it. Like, let me just taste it. And I'm like, what the, huh? 
And he thought he was, like, <laughs> spitting game. And so me and Lily just looked at each other and we're like, we got to escape. Not only is this guy not it, but also we're going to die. Mm-hmm. We get up to this, like, random infrastructure. The second that we get to the level, it smells terrible. <laughs> like, like a straight sewage. <laughs> like, it's terrible, terrible. My stomach's turning. <laughs> even- I am trying to choke down this tequila water. Oh, I thought you meant, like, turning now, because even just now going back to the mindset of where we were, it's bringing me back to a really scary place. No, like, same. I don't know if I need to revisit that memory. I know. So I go <laughs> in the bathroom myself, and I'm like, okay, Lily, I need to, like, Lily just, I need to, I need to decompress, like, <laughs> quite literally. Decompress, and, aka <clears throat> shit herself. Yeah. And, oh, my God, I hate that this is about to be, like, recorded for everybody <laughs> to listen to, but it's kind of funny looking back on it now. So I am just not okay. I am texting them from the bathroom. And, and the rest of the girls, they're having the best time. They have all these Snapchat stories of like, oh my God, see-through dance floor. And they're all dancing out there, getting free drinks, taking shots, flirting with boys. Meanwhile, I'm locked in this janky bathroom, texting them like, you guys, I think I have, I think I have food poisoning. I think I might be allergic to shrimp. I don't know why I keep eating it. It's just so good. And Lily, about 20 minutes later, she comes in. She joins me in the stall next to me. And it was kind of a bonding moment. Yeah, we were just, like, talking through the stalls. We're like, yeah. <laughs> Not going to go into details. It was like a white chick scene. You've seen the movie. But there was a lot of comfort in there, though. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, there was no one in there. So I just felt really at peace. I felt like I could just, you know, let loose. <laughs> just <laughs> let loose. And then the worst part about it is I hear these two little girls' voices. And I'm like, uh oh, uh oh, we've got some company. I open the stall after flushing. I'm like, holy fuck, they're gonna try to go in the stall because all of the stalls were closed, other than the ones that me and Lily were in. And I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna go in the stall after me. Um, it gets worse. She goes, oh my god, Jenna. And I'm like, no way. She goes, I follow you on TikTok. I'm like, no way that this girl in Cabo literally follows me on TikTok. What are the odds of anybody that I'm, I'm going to meet somebody in a different country that, like, knows who I am after I just, just, like, Made died. Made rogue skid rogue. <laughs> yeah, after I just died. <laughs> so that was, like, the funny moment of that night. Yeah, so we paid 20 bucks, but we definitely got our money's worth. Yeah. Oh, and then after that, okay, we're feeling a little bit better, you know, Mm -hmm. decongested. And then we ended up meeting these guys that were with their dad. And so the dad had the one son and then the, like, the Mm half-brother. It was kind of an interesting dynamic. Yeah. Um, I didn't fully understand it, but. Yeah, I didn't fully understand. He was, he was like a hot stepdad. Yeah. But the most important takeaway from that is that when Squid Row closed, they wanted to keep partying. Mm-hmm. And we're like, sure, we'll walk down the city of downtown Cabo. Sure, we'll do that. That's super safe. And then we found ourselves at Cabo Jack's, where we were conned into paying, like, $20 a person. Yeah, but the stepdad just stepped in and saved the day yep. and paid for all of us, like, all the girls, all mm-hmm. the guys. And so um, I f- I'm kind of scared, to, like... Are we going to get in trouble for saying this? But it was, like, open after hours, and it wasn't supposed to be. What are they going to do? Have the police come and arrest us? (laughs) (laughs) They're not going to find us. They might. I don't know. Should we cut that out? No, but the stepdad did pay for all of us, so that was kind of a nice perk. Mm -hmm. But the promoter that we were with, he was making it seem like this was the place. Like, VIP, you know, you had to pay $20 to get in. We thought this was going to be, like, premium treatment. We go in there, it's a literal dirt parking lot. Yeah, a little parking lot, and there's, like, uh, plastic folding tables and plastic <laughs> chairs with little signs that say VIP. No, the signs were literally printed pieces of computer paper. Yeah. <laughs> and Jen and I are just, like, we're exhausted. We're kind of becoming grandmas. Story for another time. But we sit down at the VIP table, VIP table, yeah. and they are, like, Oh, we've had this table reserved for weeks. You gotta get out of here. We've got people coming <laughs> yeah. just paying for bottle service, and we're like, "This is a folding table." <laughs> and then there's all these like little kiddos that are coming up to us that also came from Squid Row that we saw before. They're coming up to our table. They're like, "Is this your table? You guys got VIP?" And we're like, "Hell yeah, we do." Yeah, yeah, we're rich. <laughs> we're rich. You guys want to sit with us? Too bad. Memo us. Memo us. <laughs> and then all of a sudden. 
out of the corner of my right eye, I see this giant, like, brightness. And you know what it is? Oh, I know what it is. What my is favorite, it? My favorite part of the night. Yep. Yep. They brought out fire dancers. The fire dancers. Oh, it just literally made my night. I love, I love a good show. Yeah, so there are these two performers who are playing with fire sticks, and Lily, of course, has to get her hand on these sticks mm-hmm. at the end of the show. So they give her it, and she's going around the circle. Everyone's, like, cheering for Lily. Somebody somebody in our group has a video of it. Not me. I was too busy taking a tic- making a TikTok of it. And then that TikTok eventually got taken down because it was a dangerous activity mm-hmm. playing with fire i mean that, that is kind of fair but like yeah, nobody super got, dangerous nobody what? got hurt nobody got hurt who cares yeah and then i ended up getting banned um like quite ironic you know to get banned from somewhere that you work like mm-hmm. you know i know it's i was so annoyed about it but that was definitely the highlight now of you're banned night. again yeah now i'm banned again because i posted a video in my tennis outfit from aloe and I honestly, I think that they just thought I looked too good. They're yeah. like, I don't want to push this video out to the mass, you know. To da- the- dangerous activity is too hot to handle. Yeah, exactly. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> that was Did so weird. <laughs> <laughs> the giggle juice is setting in, you guys. Giggle juice as in this, uh, how much was this? It like- was a $15 bottle. Which is usually like more than I pay for. It was a, a, it was a double but, bottle though. So th- yeah, oh, I picked up one bottle that was fifteen, of it, and then we found one that was like, yeah. I can't so see. Well, we're feeling okay. it a little bit right now, I'm trying to loosen up. So that's Monday. Woo! <laughs> that's Monday, and why do I feel like we did something after that though? No, we didn't. We just we went back to that dang rock. <laughs> we did. We went to the rock, and I think. The night that we went to the rock that night was the night that maybe I posted that really weird encrypted Snapchat. Yeah. It was... You and that rock. I don't know. There's something about the rock. Um, <clears throat> I think we need to talk about boat day. Wait a second. Yeah, we got to talk about boat day, but when was Naranja? Wait, Naranja was when we got back from those... Yeah. Okay. Okay, here we go. So... First uber driver and then oh oh my god there are so many missing pieces to the story and it's so hard to tell a story when you're kind of drunk about when you were (laughs) drunk you know what i mean yeah okay so on our way back from downtown cabo i need to get my 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 toes out of the straight camera i know also i should probably turn on my fan in my room because my butt is literally sweating let's get a little more comfy in here can we okay okay let's do that Oh my god. I I have sweat dripping down my like non existent <laughs> cleavage. I don't even know how that's possible, but let's say we're talking about how we're so hot and we're getting under the covers. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, let's get comfortable. Let's get hide my toes. Let's get under the covers. Even though we're sweating. So we call an Uber, which on the way there, our trip was so expensive. It was like Fifteen dollars a person or something, mm-hmm. and then yeah, on the way yeah. back we called an Uber, which we thought was not safe at all. It ended up being eight dollars, and the guy was so cool. And <laughs> we get into this Uber, and we're all like looking around. I mean, we look at the Uber driver, and we're all looking around. And we're all like, are, "Are we just are we just like feeling the tequila, or is yeah. he hot?" And I think we were feeling the tequila. Yeah, yeah. In hindsight, in hindsight, looking back at the at the video. Tequila goggles is so real. Oh, my God, yeah. It's just like small town goggles, you know? Yeah. You are restricted to a very small pool of people, and then you start to think, are you hot? Mm -hmm. And then your standards lower a little bit. You're like, oh, my God, you're Mm -hmm. hot. Take that person and put them in a normal setting with thousands of other options. Not cute. That's kind of what we were dealing with, I think. So we get in this Uber. And he's playing Pitbull nonstop. Pitbull only this trip. Yeah, this was a Pitbull strictly Not trip. mad about it. Not mad about it at all. No, I kind of liked it. It's kind of a refresh. Yeah, so Je- we get in this Uber and Jenna's like, wait, out loud, in front mm-hmm. of the Uber driver, as if he can't hear. He's kind of hot. <laughs> as I should. I mean, let him know. Give him some validation. Yeah. You know what I mean? And he's getting real giggly. Yeah, and we're just like being real bold. This group of girls. Um, I mean, what's the worst that can happen? We go to we go back to 
to Texas and we never see him again. And he's like, these girls that I had in my Uber were so cool. <laughs> so we're trying to decide then, well, I mean, he's hot. Which one of us is going to make out with him? Mm-hmm. Like, that's the, really the only question that there is to ask. Yeah. And it turned out it was going to be Madison. So pulls into our resort and we keep saying, like, somebody's got to kiss him, whatever. And then we were talking about, so we were almost there and someone, everyone was saying somebody's got to kiss him. And then we didn't talk about it for a little bit. And he turns to me, he's pretty quiet. And he's like, <laughs> so like, remember when you guys were like talking about how someone was going to kiss me? <laughs> <laughs> and then he's like, he's like, so should we take that kissing Snapchat that we then? we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then I'm like, hell yeah, we're going to. And I pull out my TikTok and I take a video of Madison making out with this guy and, like, I had the flash on, and it's, like, very explicit. Like, you can oh see gosh. their mouths yes. moving. They and I'm like, it. They Ew. But the, the feedback that I received from TikTok was it doesn't look like he's got very much technique. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it was a good story. Her, but Uber rating definitely five stars. A hundred percent. Six, if you will. Yeah. So, after that, we're like, eh, not over yet. Let's take ourselves to the tequila bar that is closing – and let's just take one more shot. That mm-hmm. was that night, right? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, it was. It was. So the tequila bar is closing. The literal gate is down. Like, picture yeah. when you're at a mall and one of the stores is closed and they have that, like, uh, like the chain up. And yeah. we're all on the chain, like, banging we're, like, running slow <laughs> banging motion on the as chain. they close it. And then they close it and we're like, wait, one more shot. <laughs> as if we needed it. We're like, eh, let us in. <laughs> yeah, they were like, no, you got to Let me in. Yeah, take my sound of Charlie Moon. Come in. And then they go, let us guess. Room th- what? Four whatever. 824. They knew, <laughs> they knew what room we were. They just, they knew it. So we take this shot and we're like, all right, whatever. Mm-hmm. Was that Naranja night? Yeah. Okay. So then wow. we go to the middle of the resort. We are literally only on Monday. We're on Sunday. So we take our final shot at the tequila bar. Bars, like, close at, like, 10 p.m. in Cabo, so we get back fairly early, and we go in the lobby, and this group of kids is playing hide-and-seek, and, you know, 23-year-olds, we're, like, we're gonna be out all night clubbing, <laughs> but instead, we come home early, we're, like, we want to join in, so they tell us, three, two, one, jugamos! <laughs> like, I literally felt like such a little kid again, it was so fun. We played hide-and-seek for, like, an hour and then we went back to the rock. And the the Naranja joke is that Lily was wearing an orange dress. It was orange, <laughs> but they kept calling it red. Yeah, so the little kids kept calling... No, Naranja is orange. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Rojo is red. Oh, wow. The little kids kept calling Ellie, me Naranja because I was wearing an orange dress. Yes, and that's where, like, that's what, that's what I was referencing. Yeah. So after we play How to Go Seek, we just obviously take one of those little like lily pad things off of one of the sunbathing chairs and we Mm -hmm. put it directly on the beach because that's what that's what we should do and we sit there on the beach yet again watching the waves crash in the dark and lily is there like hmm there's a sand bank i should probably roll down it yeah everyone's having some deep combos like I'm us for, girls, and there's yeah. two other guys our age that came and hung out with us that also played hide-and-seek. Yeah, he was kind of cute, though. Like, I was hitting it off a little bit. He I texted know. me the he next He was night. pretty cute. He was pretty, pretty cute. cute. Yeah, yeah. And I, he was going to college for track. Yeah. Uh-huh. He went to Stanford, or... Yeah, I think it was I think it was Stanford. No. One, it was, an Ivy, it was yeah. an Ivy League school, and I was a little impressed, but I'm like, eh, I really I'm not that impressed. But yeah, but... I just, I feel like the best romances come from vacations, mm. like finding a boy on vacation. I had high expectations, and then they didn't live up to it, um, but it's okay. You know, other other people come into my life at some point, so... Mm-hmm. Who's it? Mm, I don't know. What? Mm-hmm. So, Lily thinks, I'm on this giant sandbank. It's a huge drop-off, big hill, big opportunity for me to just roll down it. Well... I'm in, like, so we played hide and seek, so I'm in, like, the, I'm in little kid mode. And I'm, like, I haven't rolled down a hill, like, you know, <laughs> horizontal in a while. So I just go for it. I don't tell anyone, because 
I'm just like thinking in my head, I'm just going to go for it. So I just roll down this huge sandbag into the ocean. <laughs> we we all have it like on our on our camera rolls now. So I'll have to post the actual video of Lily rolling down. But she was just going and going and going. It, she looked like she was maybe a foot and a half away from going into the actual shore. I was going shore. so fast. So fast. And can you so, insert clips in your YouTube? Like, can you say, insert clip here? I don't know. Hannah could definitely do that. Maybe. I'll send over the clip of you rolling down the hill, and if they can put it in, that'd be awesome. Put it up, like, in, like, the top corner. Yeah. But <clears throat> I, it was also another one of those nights that I was like, mm-hmm, it seems like a good opportunity for me to make a really weird Instagram story <coughs> again. Yeah. So it was a video of you rolling down the hill, and it was to the song In the Arms of an Angel. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> Didn't really make any sense at all, but I woke up in the morning and had a good laugh out of it. <laughs> And then we just started our day all over again. Yeah. And this was hard work, guys. Yeah. I mean, we were pushing through. I mean, yeah. after like two days, we were kind of like... This was a business trip. Yeah. This we, was not a relaxing vacation. This was a business trip. Yeah. Drink. Club. Another club. How to go seek. More <laughs> shrimp. Shrimp basket. Shrimp basket. Shrimp basket. <laughs> Squid row. Skid Sh- row. Shit yourself. <laughs> Die. <laughs> Literally, that's exactly, exactly what it, oh my god, we cannot forget about the housekeeping story. I almost forgot. We almost forgot. So, what day was it? Tuesday. Mm-hmm. We are, what? Oh my gosh. We're out of the pool all day. Mm-hmm. We're doing our thing. And then we come back later, and Lily's going through her stuff, and she's like, I feel like I'm missing money right now. Yeah. You know? And I'm like, you know, it could have just been me being dumb, like, yeah. drunk. Yeah, because we went out the night before. Yeah. And we had house cleaners in our apartment, like, during the day when we were at the pool and at the beach. And she's like, you know, I maybe could have just spent more money than I thought I did last night, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then everybody starts checking their bags. And I lost, like, $80 out of my book bag. And I'm just kind of, like, unfazed at that point. Like, I don't know why I didn't have any urgency of, like, where is my money? Yeah. But everybody's freaking out. Because everyone's, everyone's checking theirs and all their, their cash is gone except for a couple bills. Yeah. And so we go to the lobby mm-hmm. and we tell them, like, we think that, you know, the maids stole our money when they were cleaning our place because we know for a fact we did the math that we did not spend that much, that much money the night before. Yeah. Everyone clearly had something missing. Yeah. And the best part about this entire trip is the girl working there goes, that is so weird you say that because one of the housekeepers called us and told us that they came into your room and there were a bunch of ripped up dollar bills everywhere. <laughs> and we're like, did we do that? Did we leave them out? Like, what? Like, they they were saying, we, we never got to the bottom. It became a whole investigation. Like, they came into our rooms, but basically someone reported that we were ripping up our money. They saw They saw us ripping up our money and, like, Throwing it. Yeah, there there were apparently pieces of dollar bills all over the apartment. Like we made a mess. And you should have seen our face. It was just bills. They did. They like they were saying that we ripped up the twenties. They you should have seen our faces when they said that. That was the claim. We were all like, I don't don't have money to rip up. (laughs) Yeah, I I cannot afford. I don't know how much money they think that I'm making from TikTok, but it's not that much. Mm -mm. So, not enough for me to just be like throwing that away. So we make that claim, and then we're like, okay, well, we have a reservation at dinner. We're going to go to dinner, and then we're going to follow up on it. So then we go to the lobby. She's waiting for us, and we are pretty tipsy from dinner because this was Kennedy's birthday dinner. Um, We did a few shots. We had a couple drinks, did a little photo shoot. And so we're finally ready for the investigation. We go back to our place, and they bring in a whole crew of, of people. Plastic gloves on, everything. on, everything. They're geared up and ready for this full on investigation. It literally looks like a crime scene. And they were, they <laughs> didn't really tell us. I think, so they just started this investigation. They were looking to see if we had ripped up any, I think, any money <laughs> or just to find something. But they're going through all of our like suitcases and they're like going through things. Meanwhile, like our dirty underwear is on top and like yeah, it's a like, guy and he's like, mm. What is this? He's like, he's like, shit, should I put this in my pocket? I could, <laughs> I could probably sell this for a lot of money. I could probably make up for those ripped dollar bills. And it was just the weirdest, the weirdest encounter 
I think of the entire trip. We never got to the bottom of it. We never got our money back. But, Mm -hmm. you know, I think what I did was I paid money to be able to have this story, to be able to share it on the podcast. Because $80 for this type of content, that seems undervalued in my opinion. Oh, yeah. For sure. So the next day, there's a lot of days here. It sounds like we're, you know, describing a lot of maybe weeks here, but we were only there for five days. We packed in a lot. Yeah. I mean, it was a jam-packed schedule. Um, But the last thing that I want to share is the boat and then the shrimp in the bed. Yes. Okay. Yes. So take it away with the boat situation. All right. So we get a boat for the last day. Kennedy has a friend of a friend that hooks us up. And we get to this boat, and it is a yacht. I'm not even trying to flex here because (laughs) it was about 40 bucks per person. Yeah, it was so cheap for us. And, like, normally this boat would be hundreds of, well, I mean, it was, like, it was multiple thousand dollar boats. And, like, usually you have people jam-packed on it so you can afford to to take it out. Yeah, but I think it was, like, a weekday and it was a a friend of a friend. Exactly. You know what we were doing? We were having fun on a weekday, you guys. There's value in having fun on a weekday. And so... Yeah, we just have this whole yacht to ourselves, and we get on, and we're like, "What? we don't deserve this. Like, what are, why do we have this? Mm-hmm. We shouldn't. Mm-hmm. So we start drinking, the only thing we know how to do. Exactly. And the captain, her name is Cece. Shout out Cece. Cece. Cece, actually. Cece. 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 Yeah. And um, so she's pouring us up drinks and tequila, and we start Drink a lot, have Ooh. fun, taking thirst traps, all that. And oh, yeah. she's drinking with us. And there's two captains on the boat. So the cap- the other captain wasn't drinking. But they were having a fun time with us. And 100%. We had to go snorkeling. It was Jenna's first time snorkeling. Yeah, I did not like that, by the way. Um, it might have been, like, the most adventurous thing I've ever done. But seeing, like, little creatures under me, <laughs> didn't love it. Didn't <laughs> love it. So we came back on the boat. But it made me so happy to see... Like, you doing something for your first time. Oh, my God. <laughs> Lily. That was so deep of you. That was kind of cute. So Thanks, weird. girl. I jumped off the top of the boat, too. It was, like, a double-decker. And, like, that, to me, that's a little adventurous. It's getting yes. out there. Getting out of my comfort zone. Yeah. So we come back on the boat. And we're like, let's do another thing to get out of our comfort zone. Let's waterfall vodka from a double <laughs> story. So Lily is up on this double-decker boat. There's, like... Oh, my God. She's up there with this bottle of, what was it, like, Absolute? Yeah. Absolute. <laughs> we're all down below, and we're all like, yeah, waterfalling. Like, like, let's make it a music video. Like, let's be oh sexy and God. all this. So I'm, like, waterfalling it down to these girls. Wait. So Madison goes first. <laughs> but, the, but the music video in question is Call Her Maybe, because Madison was <laughs> also still on the Madison's fucking on the ox with Call Her Maybe. So... <laughs> I pour it down, and Madison goes first, and <laughs> she's like, ah, my eyes, like, kind of like a Spongebob, ah, my leg, and it's just all in her eyes, and it's, like, burning her, and I don't think Jenna noticed Madison, because she's like, ooh, me next, <laughs> so Jenna goes under, and I'm still pouring, and Madison's, like, rinsing out her <laughs> eyes with the water ball that Sessie gave to her, and then Jenna's like, oh, my <laughs> eyes. It's str- it's literal straight vodka in my eyeballs. And then we're all screaming. <laughs> like, we thought we were being hot. I don't know what we thought we were doing. We thought it was a moment. And we're like, yeah, it's going to go viral on TikTok. <laughs> and all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, my God, I really can't see. I'm impaired. <laughs> and so we're flushing out our eyes. And then, like, just the rest of the boat, I mean, it was so fun. We were on yeah. the lily pad with Sese. We, uh, she convinced us to go out that night. And we're like, yeah, let's go out. Meanwhile, there is a family boat next door to us <laughs> while we're doing all of these things. Like, we're being so obnoxious, being yeah. just like, yeah, who cares? We're going to take, you know, we're going to take pictures galore. And we're mm-hmm. just going to, like, dance with each other and just be, you know, be ourselves. Be on yeah. our girls' trip. Enjoy it. Meanwhile, there's this family wholesome boat next door. And they are all doing the Macarena together. <laughs> Macarena? The- Macarena. Macarena. Macarena? Macaroni? Macaroni. Macarena. Whatever. Mm -hmm. So they're all, like, dancing together with their kids. It's so wholesome. And what do we do? Oh, we put on the DJ version of that song with, like, the, you know, like, the bass. Yes. Macarena, Macarena. Like, shake your, shake a booty, shake a booty. And we're all standing up dancing in our, like, basically thong bikinis. Mm -hmm. (laughs) The family? 
<laughs> all instantly at once sits down. Yeah. Like not a kid standing. Not, they're, they're not and, happy and with then, us. And then they were like not happy at all Mm-mm. because we. I mean, we just want to be part of the fun. I don't blame them. Inappropriate. I, I mean, completely inappropriate. Yeah. Looking back, we, maybe not our best move, but we just want to have fun. You know, we just want to be part of it. We felt yeah. a little left out. So that was another good part of the trip. And mm-hmm. then we got back from the boat. We had intentions to go out with Cece and some of the other captains. And um, Lily and Kennedy ended up passing out. Yeah. So I don't know. Mass and, and Julianne, two of the other girls that came with us, are party animals. And mm-hmm. I don't know how they keep going. Be- or I'm just too much of a grandma for this. No, it's because Madison only drinks tequila water. Yeah. And, like, she doesn't get ha- hangovers. True. I mix too much. And Julianne, just in herself, she's a champ. I, she's a different breed. Mm-hmm. So they're, like, their whole Uber home, they're, like, we're going out. Okay, as soon as we get out, we've been going all day. I'm hot. I'm tired. Whatever. <laughs> so we get Sunburnt a little bit, you know. A little bit. And they're just, like, we're going to, ladies, shower, get ready, and we're going out with the captains we're, right when we get home. We were going to go out with the captains. We were also going to meet up with these guys that Madison had found on Bumble that I, yes. okay I'm not even gonna throw Madison on the rust this was a group effort we all thought that the guys were cute we were yeah. all gonna meet up with them um and then you two ended up falling asleep yeah so we get back and I'm like I'm a big nap girl and I'm like I just need to shut my eyes for maybe a couple minutes three minutes I shut my eyes and I thought it was a dream but I like hear the girls like oh my gosh Lily and Kennedy fell asleep are you <laughs> kidding me let's go to dinner so then eventually you I wake up to Julianne, Kennedy and I are both asleep, and I wake up to Julianne bursting in through the door. Well, let me tell you that when we were at dinner. Yeah, flashback like, to Jenna I mean, and them, so, what so, they were doing. So you guys are sleeping, mm-hmm. and while you guys are sleeping, we are enjoying ourselves at dinner. We're having a time. We're like, can we get margaritas, whatever. And the margaritas that they gave us were absolute trash. They were off on their game that night. So we were getting, like, really not feeling well. The margaritas were just not sitting right. And so we were drinking those, and then in combination with the shrimp tacos. It all goes back to the frickin' shrimp tacos, you guys. So much. Um, it was a strictly shrimp diet, that trip. Yeah. I think I honestly lost, like, five pounds. I'm not going to lie. It's kind of it's kind of cool. So oh, we are getting these shrimp tacos, and we're thinking in our heads, we're like, this is so rude of us. We have to take the shrimp tacos back to Kennedy and, and Lily. So we ask for to-go boxes, and they're like, no, we don't do to-go because it's all-inclusive. You know, if they want to eat, they have to come here. Like, mm, they're tired, they're sunburned, whatever, we're going to let them live. So our first initial instinct is, huh, that's fine. Give us some paper towels. We're going to wrap up those tacos and literally put them in our pants and take them over to Lily and Kennedy who are passed out. True so, friends. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. I mean, tell me about, tell me about like, a real friend. So, Madison and Julianne are stuffed in their pants with tacos. Mm-hmm. And, like, the fact that you guys ate that makes me a little nauseous. But okay, flashback to my, my Yeah, this is, this is your side. So, we are sound asleep. We just sleep at, like, what, 7 p.m. Mm-hmm. Kennedy and I are on this pull-out food early night. In our swimsuits, just passed out at, like, 7 p.m. <laughs> and Kennedy's swimsuit is this, like, giant, fluffy, like, tool swimsuit. So yeah, the fact it's that like she a loofah. Fell, it was literally a loofah swimsuit. The fact that she fell asleep in it is just, it's funny in itself. Yeah. So when you wake up and you see, like, all this tool in your face, you're like, what the, what's going on here? <laughs> so, anyways, I wake up at maybe, went to sleep at, like, 6 or 7. I wake up at probably 10 o'clock to Julianne busting in the room, and I think, oh, my gosh, what's happening? Like, I'm scared this person's, like, busting down the door. Julianne throws open the door and she's like oh you guys don't know the work I went through to get these tacos for you I put them in my pants <laughs> she bought brought four tacos back two for me two for Kennedy Kennedy's still half asleep I'm wide awake because I'm excited for shrimp tacos I love their shrimp not anymore but I did <laughs> and so she places two tacos from her pants by my head and two by Kennedy's and she's like oh this isn't enough I'm gonna go back and get you guys more so she's gonna she go back, back to dinner Excuse me, I'm still sitting there. I'm on, like, my second nasty-ass margarita. And I'm like, you back for seconds again? So soon. So soon. And, and she's, like, running back. She's like, we have to get more. They're going to be so hungry. Like, they're drunk. We need to get more. That's not enough. Like, we had, they were I just, mean, it was four tacos. But, yeah, but we had, like, six each yeah. when we were at dinner. So. Well, four for me. So I woke up, and I was so excited for this. I love these little shrimps. 
And so I eat my two, and Kennedy's like half asleep. She's just on off. She's like, what's happening? She doesn't know that Julianne just put two hot tacos by her head. So I take the two tacos from her head, like, really carefully <laughs> crawl over her so she doesn't wake up, and I eat the two tacos that she has. So you're at four now. I'm at four, and they're spilling everywhere. <laughs> the shrimp are spilling everywhere. They were small tacos, too. Mm-hmm. Let's just reiterate that. I mean, we're not eating, like, giant five-course meals. They were small. But I housed them. Yeah. I housed them. And then, but but tell me how you woke up and you smelled something a little so, fishy. Anyways, You're this like, is Kennedy, a story about how I woke up smelling fishy. <laughs> Did you read the shower, Lily? Be honest. <laughs> it wasn't the first time. No, 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 no. Oh my god, my parents watch this. <laughs> she really does. She really does watch it. Okay, so you woke Shout up. Hi, Kristen. I'm oh, sorry, girl. Kristen, sister, what's up? <laughs> Come back soon. Okay, tell them how you woke up with the shrimp in your face. So, anyways, it was like a movie. It was like Project X because I woke up, you know, fell asleep back asleep after housing those four tacos i woke up at probably 5 a.m to the sun beaming in my eyes <laughs> anyway, i'm like still in my swimsuit i'm right next to kennedy on the pullout couch and her sw- her giant loofah swimsuit <laughs> and i just see shrimp little baby shrimp outlining us like in the crime scene when they outline <laughs> people like little shrimp everywhere <laughs> I'm like, what happened last night? Last night was a movie. Really, we fell asleep at 6. The movie in question, falling asleep at 6 p.m. (laughs) Literal Project X. You wake up, you got shrimp all next to you. You're like, what is that? What is that smell? What is that? So that was like, I feel like that was kind of like the last part of our trip that was like, we're still going to talk about these memories for probably years. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm never going to forget this because it was the first girl trip that I actually went on by having, like, a full-time job, like, our first real vacation that I, like, genuinely took time off of work to just focus on, like, having fun, you know? Yeah. And it was during the weekdays, which is the, you know, you what better. ties us back to yeah. everything. Um, so now that you guys got to experience our, you know, our time in Cabo, I feel like hopefully you feel like a part of our girls' trip. Um Oh wait, we cannot end we cannot end this episode without talking about our trip home. Because as we mentioned uh, at the very beginning, it was way too easy. And like we were bound to have some karma and we got it. Oh, we got it good. We got it really good. So, okay. I thought I was going to wrap things up, not going to wrap it up. Mm-hmm. We're on our way back from Cabo. We're in the car and I'm thinking to myself like, "Yeah, I haven't even checked in yet." And everyone's like, "Jenna, what? You have to submit your negative COVID test. Like you need you need four hours in advance before you're able to even get on a plane. I'm like, oh, my God, blah, blah, So I'm freaking out about that. We don't have any time. We get to the airport. We get on the plane. The plane then gets delayed, and we had a connecting flight on our way home. So our plane was delayed like 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. We got into Dallas super late. We're running through the airport to try to get to our – sprinting. Like dripping droplets. We get to TSA. There's like this giant line. And in our minds, we're thinking, this, this, uh, what's it called, a layover? This layover is our time to go get some Chick-fil-A. Yeah. And Madison kept saying the entire time, she's like, you guys, there's not going to be any time during the layover for Chick-fil-A. No. And she was getting mad at us for us consistently saying we're going to get Chick-fil-A. Mm-hmm. Turns out she was right because we did not end up making our flight from Dallas to Austin. And so I don't know what is going on with American Airlines lately, but they – they keep saying that, like, they're going to put you in a hotel, but I think that it's not true. Like, because there was a huge line of people, and they were not putting them up in a hotel. So, in our minds, we're like, okay, we're about to sleep American. in this. Yeah. What's up, American? What's up, American? What's the tea? What's going on? I'm telling you the tea. It's not real. It's it's a fraud. Fly United. Yeah, Fly United. Fly, fly Southwest. Southwest. Anything they got, else? They got, like, free check bags, too, don't they? Yeah. Yes. What am I? What am I flying home? Fly Allegiant. Yeah, Allegiant. I mean, if you wanna, if you wanna die, if you wanna take a risk, you're gonna take Allegiant. You're gonna take Spirit. Jenna. No, I I'm always take it. I'm literally flying home next no, that, week on Allegiant. No, Why that's what I that? take. No, that's ex- <laughs> sister. Are you gonna be okay? That's what <laughs> I take too. But you know what? I take it because I want like the exhilaration. I want. You're right. It's like a roller coaster ride. Exactly. I really like that perspective. Good, good. I'm glad I kind of made you think about things in a little different way. It's <laughs> always good to have different perspective in life. So we are thinking in our minds, okay, 
our next earliest flight to Austin is like 7 a.m. So we either wait in this line for four hours to give us a hotel room that doesn't exist, or we settle down, Mm -hmm. sit on the floor that is completely germ infested, and we fall asleep. And then we take the flight into Austin in the morning. Or, wait a second, the next flight over from our terminal, from, well, not our terminal, from our gate is into San Antonio. San Antonio is only an hour away from Austin. Not too shabby. Not too bad. You know, it's an hour worth of time. Mm-hmm. Why don't we just fly into San Antonio, have somebody pick us up, and then bring us into Austin? This is exactly what we did. We flew into San Antonio. We had Julianne's mom bring us back to Austin. It wasn't that simple, though. We were exhausted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the morale was low. People were pissed yeah. off. You know, I was trying to look at the positive, but the idea of getting home at, like, 4 a.m. when you have to wake up at 8.30 to start working at 9 after three and a half days off of work, not super awesome. Right. Not super ideal. Yeah. But all in all, it was a great trip. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that we took it. Um, I feel like it was a bonding experience. I mean... Oh, it definitely was. I didn't... Yeah. Like, the girls, I didn't know as well as... You did. Mm -hmm. And I feel so close to them now. I mean, my New Year's resolution was never to say no to a girl's trip. And if that meant sacrificing some other things or taking some extra shifts. I mean, working four jobs. Yeah, okay. Also, I'm going to talk about Lily. The fact that she, so she was working at Nordstrom. She was doing, like, Mm -hmm. their trunk club. Yes. And then she's also babysitting. She's also doing Rover, which is, like, walking (laughs) people's dogs and then, what's the other thing? Etsy. Oh, also she, on an Etsy. Yes. Also doing an Etsy. And she makes these, like, little disco uh, disco ball planters. planters. Mm-hmm. Lily has so many things going on. And I feel like she's the epitome of, if you want to live a certain lifestyle, then work for it. Mm-hmm. Like, make it attainable so that you can have enough money to travel and do things that you want to do on the weekends or on the weekdays. On weekdays. And, exactly. Uh, little yeah. plug there. And I feel like you are a very hard worker. I respect that about you a lot. Hey, do it, girl. Oh, no problem. We're getting a little <laughs> noggin. <laughs> if, you, if you're watching the YouTube video, it makes a lot more sense, but she just fist bumped me into my head. Um, but, okay, now that we've given you kind of the lowdown on the entire story, hopefully you feel like you tagged along to our Cabo trip. Um, I'm ending every single episode with asking my guest or giving myself, like, my own advice. But what is... Your advice for everybody who's listening, for them to do this week for fun after work or, you know, whatever they're doing. What is your advice of how to have fun on a weekday? Mm. My favorite fun on the weekdays activity is probably I'm doing a sand volleyball league right now. So, and I mean, everyone has it. Every community has it and you can join that. They have kickball, softball. I mean, every sport you can think of to uh, relive your high school peak. Yeah, I love that. I'm a very competitive person, and I feel like I need to take out that outlet in some way. Yeah. And I don't really know how, but when I came to your volleyball match, not only did it remind me that I didn't make the team in seventh grade, (laughs) which is still super messed up. I mean, I'm very obviously traumatized from that experience. Yeah, so sad. But, yeah, I mean, you don't even necessarily have to join a league. You could just get a group of your friends together, girlfriends, guy friends, whoever, and go to, like, a random park in your town and play softball, play volleyball, kickball, flag football. It's a double whammy because you're getting a great workout and you're also having fun with your friends. Yeah. On the weekdays. Yeah. And it's a wholesome activity too, Lily. Thank you for acknowledging that. I mean, after we just talked about drinking tequila all week in Cabo, it's nice to kind of balance it out with something that is not focused around drinking. Right. Exactly. So that is the end of my third episode. Ah, Oh, my God, that's so crazy. If you listen to the entire end of this, thank you so much for supporting my podcast and everything. I'm super excited for my next episode. You'll have to wait to find out who that is with. Um, Mm -hmm. I think you might like it. I think you might like it. Not much (laughs) as much as me, but you might like it. Yes. So thank you guys again for tuning in, and I'll talk to y'all next week. Cheers! Ooh, Ooh ASMR. Rush a, rush a fee. Oh, yeah, Rush A fee too. If you're going through recruitment, Lily and I are both Alpha Phi sisters, AOE girls. 
Um, we're both on Alabama TikTok right AOE, now. AOE, Alabama mm-hmm. TikTok, but Russia, Iowa State, AFI. My shirt's from Panhellenic, my skirt's from Cooks, and my podcast is from Fun on Weekdays. <laughs> See y'all. See y'all.